Hey everybody, um, today is going to be a quick video. Uh, this is a simple script. I'm going to show kind of how it comes together and then what we're trying to do with it. If you know Dynamo pretty well, you probably won't get much out of this video. Uh, if you're newer to Dy Dynamo, hopefully this is helpful uh, and um, you learn something from this. So before we talk about the Dynamo, I want to talk about... Um, kind of what our goal is, what we're trying to do. So uh, in this in this uh, model here, it's a, I just call it MEP, there's really nothing in it. The only thing that's in it is this link. And this link um, contains 12 VAV boxes. Um, there's a set of four, each being a different type, each set. And so my goal is to automatically copy over specific elements based off of, in this case, type, types, or a specific type. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is, um, you know, I want to add some properties to the elements. I want to modify them. I want to schedule them. I want to do all sorts of things with them, and I'd rather have them in my model. Um, this came about because somebody was copy monitor monitoring stuff and because of how tedious that workflow is they thought just copying the elements would be quicker and better for their um, application or for what they wanted to do and so they um, uh, took this script and used that and it helped them it automated a lot for them so um, there's a variety of different applications you could use this for, co I mean, for copying elements, but that's one of the practical reasons why this script come about, came about in the first place. Um, so that's our goal. Bring those elements in when we want to bring in a specific type. So, um, yeah, we'll just, we'll go, we'll read it to the right, um, or going to the right. And so the, Knowing that the elements exist within a link, we'll probably want to get the link. And so there's a cool node from Archilab, and I don't actually have the um, the node or uh, monocle installed. Um, and I'll need it uh, has a cool little um, ability to uh, auto note all your different nodes, so you know exactly what packages they come from. If I remember, uh, this is, I know this is from Archilab. I'm pretty sure this is from Bimorph nodes, but I'm going to come up here to extensions and then show graph properties. Um, and that's not what I want to do. I want to show um, work, workspace uh, references. Speaking of graph properties, you could do some, like this is really cool, I think. Like I use Nime and you can do stuff like that. You can do a lot more with Nime. But I think this is headed in a good direction. Like that's that's pretty cool to add your description and image, uh, maybe like a um, um, so I mean your author name. Maybe you have a link to like some other stuff, um, more documentation. You could put that here. Anyways, off topic, but it's a cool little thing. Workspace references. So in this case, there's Orchid. Um, so this is Archilab right here. Let's see if, no. Um, uh, this is BIM Norf, BIM Morf nodes, I'm pretty sure. But let's uh, click on help and just make sure. So we see, uh, where is it? Okay, uh, BIM Morf nodes. And then I think the last one is the Archie. Um, or not, I mean Orchid. Um, so help, Orchid, okay. So I'm going to do Control W, Orchid, um, and then like we um, figured out that that is the Bimworth one. Control W, oh my goodness, uh, Bim, what is it, okay, Bim, And then control W again, and then we'll. So this isn't really um, 
what I wanted to show you guys, but I think that's helpful. Noting, uh, putting notes when you use like custom stuff like this is helpful. Um, also, if you need to describe something, like I've added notes that describe kind of what's happening. Maybe there's a condition uh, and you want to describe like what the two different conditions are or something. Um, so I think that's still a helpful note. Helpful um, tip. Uh, Control W though is the uh, uh, keyboard shortcut I was using. I think there's another way, like through some other m method, to create notes, but I don't know. I do Control W, that puts it on there. So I'll close that. And we'll go back to this. And so the first bit is there's an Archilab node called select.get uh, documents, and that will return a list of documents. Let's go over here, right click on this and freeze it and then pan back over, click run, pan again back over here, pull this up a little bit and then uh, you'll see right now we only have one link. Something to keep in mind is that uh, when you're in an actual project you may have a ton of links uh, and so you have to figure out a way to filter that. Now further uh, through this script we'll see over here I do some filtering. And I'll show you how that uh, how that works, and we won't get too much into filtering because there's like hundreds of ways to filter for elements, but it's something to keep in mind when you're building a, a script that you're going to use on a project. So in this case, I just want the mechanical equipment. I know the VAV boxes are on mechanical equipment. There's this cool little node that says uh, link element dot of category. And so what this does is it returns the uh, elements of a specific category. So in this case, this is mechanical equipment. I pass that in. There's also this little node here. And if I click on that, and if I type M, if I click on M, we'll see that it takes us um, to the M's. And then I can also do category from here. And this returns the actual category object. Whereas this takes in a string um, and then returns the category uh, object. So anyways, uh, we know we want mechanical equipment because that's what those VAV boxes are on. We pass that in along with the link, the link instance. And then um, that will return a list of our elements. So in this case, we've got 12 items. You can see that there. All right, and now I don't really need the structure here um, and so for simplicity's um, sake I'm going to flatten it and so you can see here that this is a list with another list in it I just want a single list and that's what essentially we're doing with this uh, flatten um, and then now that that's flattened what I'm going to do is get the element dot name which is going to return the, um, the the name, the type name. Uh, and then what I can do from there is um, get the unique items. And then here I can select one of those items. So in this case, I'm selecting index one. And this X is just a variable that can mean anything. So if I switch this to, I don't know, my, let me do it, my list, plug that in. Um, I recommend ver when you're naming variables or adding notes, be as descriptive as possible. Um, it's helpful for you uh, in the future and anybody else that's getting into your scripts. So in this case, I want index one. That's this one here. So this eight inch. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to create this bool mask, which is a list of um, trues or falses. And then um, for all the ones that have size 2.8 inch inlet are going to be true and so we can see 4 to uh, 7 are true. We can check over here and go from 4 to 7 and we'll see those are all the 8 inch. And then what we're going to do is essentially filter our elements list over here based off of this condition that we're checking for. Or sorry, the, these four notes here for this these conditions. This is the condition um, set of nodes and so based off of this list that's going to determine what um, how our list is filtered 
how our list is put into a false bucket and a true bucket. And that's what this uh, final node over here does, um, kind of wrapping up our, our entire condition uh, set of nodes. And so if I drop this down, we'll see that the N, if we hover over in this output, we'll see N is uh, the true, and this is the false items. And so what this does is it goes, okay, um, this item is false, and we're just gonna take, we're gonna go one to one. So if I drag this over and we put this here, it's going one to one. Um, so here is false, 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 false. And it says, okay, this one's true. Um, index four is true. Now index four here, and we'll see here, this is index four. We're gonna put that in the in bucket because those are the true elements. And then it's gonna go through and so on, putting the items in the right bucket. Um, and then depending on what you're filtering for or what your condition is, you either wanna get the out or the in. In this case, we want the eight inch, so we want the in. And then this last node here takes in the element um, that we're passing into it from the link. And so we'll pass that in right there. And then the instance, the link instance, which is um, this, uh, which is coming from this node here. Unfreeze that. I'm gonna pull Dynamo over real quick, show you that there's, there's no elements there. If we pull this back and then click run It'll take just a, a second. We'll expand that and see that the elements have been copied over. Um, and let me, I'm just gonna scroll over and then we'll just, I wanna show you guys this. So here is our, our two lists. You can see the eight inch. So this is from the link. You can see the element IDs for those. So these are different because these are new elements. They've been copied in this current model. Uh, so now if I pull this over, do that selection again, we'll see that we've got those four. If I, um, if I hide this uh, link, we'll see that we have those four elements. Click on that, we've got our VAV, and it's the eight inch inlet. I'm gonna do control Z to bring the link back. Um, so there it is. Um, I wanna highlight this real quick though. There's a ton of different ways you can filter for elements. Maybe it's based off of a certain property. Maybe it's the type. Um, maybe it's some weird function within the the element itself that you're you're looking at um, or method or something there's so many different properties you can check for there's a ton of different conditions um, you can set up to, to filter elements so another way I could do this because this is not dynamic the fact that I'm indexing into this list I know this is the 8 inch and I know that's what I want but say people start to add more types into the project or into the model then this list may get, um, it may extend to where there's 10 different types. And now all of a sudden my size to eight inch inlet is, um, it's index five now. And I'm pulling some, I don't know, some other uh, type at, at index uh, one. And so this is not very dynamic and we'd have to edit it every time uh, somebody would run this. And so uh, a real easy way to do this is because this is a string, you can see that here, this is returning a string, we can check for that condition instead because that's essentially what we're doing here. These are strings, this is a string. We're coming up here and saying, hey, go through every one of these items and, and check to see if it's this string here. You know, So here is nope, false, 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 true, 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 and so on. What I can do now is knowing that is I can just delete these. I don't need this anymore. Um, and then I can just uh, either place a code block and I can say size two dot eight 
inch um, inlet, or I can do a string. I want to show you the string because this is an actual. This is the node, like the string node, uh, within uh, within Dynamo. This also, if I remember correctly, um, does not have issues with like um, special characters. So, if I was to paste this in here, it would have issues because that's a special. This is a special character, and um, the two backslash is not the forward slash. And now, if I, I'm going to come over here and freeze this, if I run this, we'll see there's a backslash there. But if it's just by itself, um, it has troubles with that. So. You'll see it returns that null. Um, just a, a little tip. Keep that in mind. So if it's just a string, um, you can use a string node or a code block. Anyways, what we can do now is plug in our uh, plug into our Y. Now, re regardless on how, if we add a bunch of bunch of other types, it's still going to work. It's still going to pull the the correct items. Um, the correct elements that we need and so now if we run it We'll see that we're pulling the same elements if we scroll over. We'll see it's the 8 inch ones and um, And yeah, and so there's a ton of different ways to filter hopefully that highlights um, that for you and Yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks